Welcome back to BIS. It's time for another episode of the Barnacle Inspiration Series, and today we're going to get struck by some red lightning and get reinvigorated, electrified, and turn into some uh, turn into some Toa and Nika. Look super cool and appreciate the awesomeness that is Bionicle. And today we're going to take a look at a bunch of Titan mocks. Uh, so what a Titan is essentially, that was the name kind of given to just some of the larger Bionicle sets. Uh, you know, you got your Takanuvas, like your Takanuva Mystica, or Maxilos, Hydraxon, the Cardus Dragon, to name a few. Titan sets were some of the larger, really cool looking Bionicle sets. And so we're going to talk about a bunch of Titan mocks that other people have made, and just sort of uh, talk about what goes into making larger, bigger Bionicle mocks. So let's get started. The first mock we've got today is by Vio at Halkas and is called Hydra Tsunami Gadunka. So first off, that's a great name. <laughs> I love the idea of building a Titan mock and just that's it. It's just a combination of really cool sounding words and other, you know, larger things. That's a, it's just a cool idea. And I think that actually kind of goes into one of my first uh, points here that I wanted to discuss was the idea of when you build a Titan mock, you have a lot of liberty to go big, go crazy, and even kind of go into some more obscure and weird things. You know, if you're building your sort of typical kind of Toa-sized mock, or you're, you're building on a bit of a smaller scale, it can actually be a little bit difficult to kind of pack in a lot of details or pack in cooler features, because you have less area to play with, you know? As cool as a very large and in-charge mock can be, sometimes it's easier because you've got more area to work in, but it can be a lot more difficult to pack in detail into a smaller area on like a little Matoran or something. So with that in mind, when you're building a Titan mock, know that you do have a lot of area to play around with. So focus on your bigger pieces or do something like this. Put a whole bunch of different heads on it, give it multiple necks, all sorts of craziness, and make it this giant serpent with five different heads because that's a great idea. Um, and again, because you're building a Titan mock, you have liberty to do that. You've got more space to work with. And additionally too, because you have more space to work with, you can work uh, a little bit more easily with having kind of uh, counterbalances or countermeasures in place that can help it to hold itself up. It of course depends how you make it, but you know sometimes if you're building a, a typical uh, Toa-sized mock or something and you want to put like massive wings on it, it can get a little top-heavy. But if you're building with uh, a larger scale and you're building a Titan mock, you can use more pieces, it starts to be a little bit more heavy, a bit more beefy, uh, and so again it does depend how you build it, but you may be able to work around that so you have a very strong sturdy base or you just have some heavier pieces in the torso or something and so it's able to uh, support sort of larger elements or bigger ideas. So if you have the pieces, by all means do that. Think really far outside the box and build your larger scale mocks like this and go to town on them. Give them multiple different heads. Make it this giant weird creature, all sorts of craziness. There's a lot of uh, strong pros that you can uh, achieve if you're building a Titan mock. The multiple different Gadunka heads on this mock is also really cool. One, just Gadunka's a really cool Titan set. And that headpiece there is so unique and so different. And it works really well here seeing uh, all these different Gadunka heads like that. They really do create that sort of more, you know, as the name suggests, Hydra-like look to it or a more crazy kaiju kind of beast. Uh, so it's a really good starting point to do that. And I don't really imagine those Gadunka heads would be that expensive on Bricklink. Don't quote me on that. I don't actually know. But I imagine they'd be fairly cheap and you could buy a, you know buy five of them like this. One little detail I really like is the little kind of cores, the little Zamospheres. Uh, you can kind of see them sort of where the kind of torso, belly uh, ends and the neck start. Uh, those those torso pieces that allow you to put a Zamosphere in them, uh, they came on some of the Chima uh, Ultra Build sets that came out. They were a bit more of an obscure construction theme that unfortunately didn't actually go everywhere in the world. Some of the later waves of it uh, weren't released worldwide, unfortunately. Um, uh, but what's really cool about it is, I, I don't know, I just like the idea of them all having those little cores on each neck. I kind of like the idea of, you know, if a, a hero dude is trying to face this guy down, very similar to a Hydra, you know, if he chops off uh, one neck, another one will take its place sort of thing. You know, in order to actually cut off one of the necks, you have to, like, stab the core. So some cool, like, storytelling or a little story being uh, evolving from that. And that may not be uh, Vao's uh, intent here on, the, on this mock, but I still like it. I think it's a cool idea, and it, uh, it conjures up ideas and thoughts and feelings and stories, and that's fun. I like that. 
Also, it appears, uh, it's a little hard to tell from some of these images, but it appears that this mock is very, very, very heavily using CCBS, and it seems that the necks and into the body is just a sort of lattice of different CCBS elements, which is always a, um, a great thing about CCBS. You can do all sorts of craziness like this. You can do very strong, sturdy frames that can allow you to create such large and imposing, beautiful mocks like this. And, you know, if you bought a fair bit amount of Hero Factory or Bionicle G2, or you just have a bunch of CCBS parts, it can be a little bit easier to, uh, to build build this larger frame here mainly using those because you get a fair bit of CCBS bones just from collecting sets. So have a look around, see if you've got a good amount and just start experimenting with your CCBS joints and pieces and bones and shells and see if you can start to, to build a larger frame and some necks and some legs or a tail coming out of it or whatever. See what works. This is a really cool mock that's really pushing the boundaries there. I love that. On to the next mock. This one's by Molly Ray, and it's called Bone Mantis. So there's a lot to love about this. Of course, it is, well, this is a Titan episode. Of course, this is going to be a Titan, but you can tell that it's a Titan because it's big. And I love some of the creative liberties that uh, Molly has been able to do with this because of that. For example, the Viserac body pieces being used as thighs on this mock. Great use of those pieces. Sometimes those pieces can be a little bit more difficult to use just because they're naturally quite large. Um, uh, they're also naturally just sort of a bit more obscure, you know? It's a very cumbersome kind of piece. You know, using it on a Toa, it's kind of just a little bit too big for an average sort of Toa-sized body. You could kind of use it as a shield, maybe, you know? There's a few different uses you could do for it, but it's a little bit more difficult to use on a smaller scale creation. But here, using it on a larger scale one, it works perfectly for thigh armor. And then you put those dishes on the front there, helps to round it out a little bit more as well. It's a really nice part use. Uh, so that's certainly something to consider there. Uh, maybe you, you yourself could uh, play around with some of your Viserac body pieces and use them for thigh armor there. It's a really nice part use. But speaking of really nice part usages, I love how this mock kind of throughout it, uh, there are these scattered Viserac uh, pieces, uh, but a different kind of Viserac piece to the one we were just talking about. These ones are, you can notice them on the knees. There's also some on the torso. Also, and there's also some of the arms. Uh, these are the little minifigure scale Viserax uh, that came with some of the system Bionicle playsets. These, these Viserac pieces were uh, kind of a marbled texture or marbled color to them rather, not, not so much a texture. It was kind of marbled with black, but also marbled with the, the classic glow in the dark color. And I love that. Kind of, I imagine those pieces were a bit of a stimulus for this mock uh, and the natural marbled color to them Molly has replicated that with the color scheme on the rest of the mock. The bottom of the legs sort of flows up into the white, the bottom of the arms flows up into the white, and they're kind of almost transitioned with those Viserac pieces. So that same sort of gradient of color uh, is consistent across the whole mock. So I really like that, and that could be something to consider. There's a whole bunch of Bionicle pieces that do have that marbled texture to them. Um, I keep saying texture, it's more of a marbled color. I guess it kind of does produce a little bit of a texture, but I would say that it's more a marbled color scheme at this point. But what's so cool about it is exactly that. Like I was saying, you look at uh, some of the Anika sets, you know, um, Hali had some, uh, even Kongu had a few, and there's a whole bunch of other different Bionicle sets, you know, Kupa uh, Karapa, Kupara, what? <laughs> Combined Kupaka and Karapa under one word there. Um, but there's a whole bunch of them that have that marble texture to them. So if you have some of those pieces and you want to implement it into a mock, can you have the color scheme of the rest of the mock kind of reflect that in some fashion? Be that sort of blend of two colors into one. It's a cool idea, I think, and I think this is a really great example of, of doing exactly that. Uh, so a great way to kind of inform color scheme here, and to use some more obscure pieces as well. Those uh, those system Viserac pieces, uh, well, you don't really see people using them that much. And speaking of a piece you don't really see people use that much, the mask on this mock is Taradox, or Takadox's mask in white. I always call him Taradox for some reason. Takadox mask in white. Typically it comes in that same Gadunka color that uh, is also glow in the dark, but it's more that bluey color. Uh, but it comes in white as well on, again, some of those Bionicle system playsets. Uh, and it works perfectly here. It's a, a really great mask, has that sort of more, I don't know, uh, there's a lot of kind of fangs on the front of it, and it is that sort of bone white color. Uh, it does have that more sort of bony look to it, and I think that fits some of the textures and um, spikes and different things on this mock here. It's very fitting. And, uh, you know, don't ever discredit some of the uh, different pieces that came in some of those Bionicle system playsets, because some of them did come with unique masks that you could very easily put on an actual character, by all means. I still love, too, how the torso is, this is very smooth texture to it. You look at the uh, the sort of rib cage on this mock, how it has 
all those different Exoforce uh, robot arm pieces and tails and claws coming out of it. And it sort of transitions from some of the smaller claw pieces into some of the larger ones. Uh, and it really helps to give this, uh, this, this beautiful sort of transition and this beautiful texture to the torso. It's very, very nice, actually. There's a lot of unique things going on on this awesome Titan mock and some, uh, yeah, really great part usages. On to the next mock. This one's by Wizarden Mocks. And this one is called the Ice Titan. So some unique stuff going on this that I really like. He's playing around with Thox, uh, Paraka spine element. And I never really realized until now, the Paraka heads are rather large and they also have the spine coming out of them. So again, it's just this sort of larger piece. Uh, and if you were to implement that onto a Titan mock, much like we see here, it works pretty well. You know, there's some masks out there that are just naturally very, very small pieces. And there's other masks out there that are naturally very large. Uh, or there's masks like these Paraka masks here, these Paraka spines, that have a whole spine coming out of the back of it. So I think that's kind of a cool idea if you want to build a Titan mock, but you're not really sure where to start. Grab a Paraka, take their spine, and use that as the impetus for the mock, because the head itself is naturally larger, so it just fits with the sort of upscaling that you'd be doing with building a Titan. But also you've got all that sort of back detail there, which you can sort of play around with, and it can help kind of... Uh, buff out and fill out some of the uh, the surface area that you've got to cover when you're building that larger mock. Some other cool things going on here, I love the use of the tires on the sort of wrists of this mock here. Some tires, especially like those, are naturally just very large, so again, can help you kind of cover up a bunch of surface area. It's a cool thing about Titan mocks, you can really play around with your larger pieces. But one thing I really love is the leg design, or the foot design rather, not so much, well the leg design's nice too, but the foot design is what I specifically wanted to talk about. It kind of reminds me of Mystica Takanuva. The, the fact that he's used those um, white claw pieces to sort of uh, round off the edges of these feet here uh, just looks very nice. But I also love the idea of doing that too. Taking a pre-existing Titan set and taking elements from it, whether it's, you know, a foot design or the basic sort of frame so that, you know, the different pistons and things that are on it that uh, helps to sort of hold it up. You take that basic frame yourself and sort of add different bits of armor on top of it. It's a great idea. You know, sometimes Titans can be a little bit more difficult to use because they can be very top heavy or they can't quite support their own weight. So there's no use reinventing the wheel. Take a look at some of the pre-existing Titan sets and copy their frames or take certain elements from it, whether it's the way they've used certain pistons or the incredible torso design that it's made, something like that. Take it and use it for yourself because yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Why not just repurpose it into your own designs? I think it's a great idea. And this mock may not necessarily be doing that with the whole frame, but there's elements of the foot design that are very similar to Takanuva, and that may not have been his inspiration, it might be a happy accident there, but I still think that's a cool idea and certainly something to consider if you're a little bit stuck, uh, especially in how the mock is sort of supporting its own weight and holding itself up. Something to consider for sure. Also a really cool weapon on this mock as well, I like that. But that's it for that really cool Titan mock. Let's move on to another really cool one. This one's by Eclipse Caller and it's called Amias. Ami... 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 Um, MS. Look, man, I'm not even going to... I don't know how to say it. I just... I don't know how to say it. If you know how to say it, good job. Ben doesn't. But this is a cool little Titan mock. And what I love so much about it is how much he's used all these different tread pieces. So these tread elements came on a whole different variety of sets and in a few different colors as well. Uh, they come in... I believe they come in black, uh, dark bluish gray. Here they come in this interesting sort of medium nougat color. Uh, and they also even come in... Did I say dark brown? I know they come in dark brown as well. And I'm sure there's a few other colors as well. But there's a whole bunch of different Technic, Ninjago, Nexo Knight sets. It's a whole bunch of them uh, that have these tread pieces in them. Uh, and they're awesome because they are a bit more flexible. Uh, so you can kind of use them like cloth, exactly as Eclipse Caller has done here. And what a great design. It looks very sort of monk-like. looks like he's got this very interesting robe design. It's beautiful. It's really, really cool and a great use of those pieces, that's for sure. I also love the idea, too, of you can build any kind of frame you want. It might be a little bit more messy. It might even have a whole bunch of different colors underneath it. But then you wrap it in these different tread pieces and you can kind of cover up some of that ugliness. So that's a kind of cool idea too, you know? I always say that with uh, different cloth elements, you know? If you have a less than desirable part of the body and you don't quite like it, cover it up with a cloth and then you don't have to worry about it. But maybe you don't actually have to cover it up with a cloth. Instead, you can cover it up with these tread pieces, which kind of resemble a cloth. That's a cool idea and a really brilliant execution, honestly. The hammer design on this mock is also super cool, uh, but the hand design on this mock as well, very similar to... Axon, the, uh, another Titan set there that was in the Anika wave. Uh, Axon had these very large hand pieces 
Uh, and this design here is very similar to them. Um, so that's also something to consider is uh, building some of those larger hand designs that um, require pieces like this, like the Hordika necks, uh, and all sorts of different uh, sort of larger pieces like that that you could use for a, a more large and in charge hand design. Because if you're building a larger mock, it's worth upscaling the hands to some degree. You don't have to go with a, a more sort of slimmed down hand design. You can have one that is accompanying of the, the size increase on your mock. But that being said, you don't have to upscale the hands. You can, of course, go with a, a sort of smaller, thinner hand design. But uh, hey, experiment with them. Try all sorts of different hand designs, whether it's a smaller one or a larger one, and see what works for the mock. We'll see another cool hand design a little later in the episode here, which, uh, which uh, definitely ties into that, that idea of building a larger scale hand design. Um, you don't necessarily have to have it fit with uh, typical human proportions if you want the mock to naturally have very, very large hands. You can. You're building your own original character. To some degree, you get to write the rules. So that's really fun. This is a super cool mock. Also uses an awesome little custom mask there as well. That's always nice to see. Uh, some great stuff going on here. On to the next mock. This is by Hafenex, and it's called Multau the Godsmith. So I always love seeing mocks that have multiple limbs, and I think this is a really, really nice example of exactly that. Uh, seeing a Titan mock with four arms is just pretty cool. It's certainly something you could do yourself. But this mock has a lot of cool things. I like the fact that he is the Godsmith, and he's got this sort of uh, hammer here that I'm sure he uses to create his awesome weapons for the gods. It's a really nice weapon. But additionally, he's got these little accessories on his belt or on his waist there. I don't quite know what they are, but I feel like that sort of somehow relates to his godsmith story. And that's just cool. It could be little vials of magma or some sort of magical enchantment that he might use when he's uh, when he's making different weapons for gods or something. And uh, it could even just be some sort of weapon or little like grenades or something interesting. I don't know, but I like it a lot. Uh, I always love seeing little mocks that have uh, accessories on them or... Uh, some sort of um, storytelling element or just just they just have things on their person because you know we as people do that so yeah, why not have your bionicle characters do that as well and it's always fun to pack in detail so I think that's a, a fun little addition and uh, certainly one that you yourself could do just a, a little slight thing but it goes a long way I sort of the use of a Ninjago sail piece here on the back of this mock here kind of like a sort of Maybe a bit like an apron or some sort of waist coat or waist cape of some some design. Looks really cool. I also love to uh, the kind of knee pad design and the way that he's done the thighs on this mock here, using some Hero Factory torso pieces there to form the kind of bulk of the thigh design. He's kind of used a couple of them there, one on the inside, one on the outside, uh, and just mirrored the design there. It looks fantastic. Those uh, Hero Factory torso pieces work perfectly as thigh armor. Uh, so, so we've seen some cool thigh designs today for different Titan mocks. And again, that's always awesome. The fact that you can use a piece that you typically put on the torso and instead put it on the legs. Uh, you're building a larger mock. You can do sort of really cool stuff like that that you really wouldn't be able to do before on your smaller scale builds. So that's always awesome. Great to see too. This is another marbled mask design that uh, very much reflects the color scheme on this mock. Pretty similar to some of the ideas we were talking about before on a past mock on this episode. So that's awesome. Some great stuff on this one here. A really nice Titan mock. This next mock here is Genesis, and it's by Diumbra X. So this mock's cool. I, I love how he's integrated some of the trans light green elements on this mock here. You take a look at the hands on this mock. He simply used some of the uh, Hero Factory head pieces uh, and used those to um, to form the hand design. You know, the the way you attach the mask typically on the top of that head. Instead, he has attached a T bar and put some of the very classic finger design there that you saw in Hydraxon and pretty much every mock ever uh, and created a, a cool looking hand design there which is a little bit different to the norm of just putting your typical hand connector on there and it's just a nice way of doing it. It's a cool little design, very simple but very effective. And additionally, all the other translite green elements on this mock here, those look fantastic as well. But I think my favorite thing on this mock is this sort of interesting kind of jetpack design. It uses all these different Xamosphere launchers and a few other sort of wing elements. And I don't know, it just looks cool. It looks different. It looks unique. It looks a lot more like a, I don't know, some sort of robot angel almost. This isn't quite a wing design, but it almost kind of is. I like that it is a little bit more abstract, a little bit more different. You don't quite know exactly what it is, but it works. It gives it this very sort of, uh, yeah, interesting, like I said, godlike look, more angel-like look, some sort of uh, 
high divine being of some kind. Uh, it's interesting. I, I always like seeing mocks that do that, that have this sort of more abstract out there thing attached on the back. It doesn't need to be anything, but if it just looks nice, it kind of frames the mock nicely, or it just is just an interesting kind of weapon design or looks cool, yeah, put it there. It's a great idea. Now, this mock here isn't quite as large as some of the other ones we've seen, but it is that little bit larger than your typical kind of Toa build or Hero Factory build. And that can still classify as a Titan, you know, just because you're building a, a mock that's larger in scale doesn't mean it has to be super massively huge. You can build a little bit more on the smaller side, and that still works. Just works fine. So there's that mock, and here's this mock. This one's by Monarch, and it's called Phasmid Plague Mech Kappa. So this was entered into Jafer's Plague Mech Contest, a contest that happened in 2018, it seems. And this here's a very, very cool, uh, cool entry into that contest, that's for sure. What I love so much about this is the color scheme on this mock. I almost didn't notice it until I zoomed in a little bit here, but this mock its color scheme, of course, is that gold and black, but there's a whole bunch of dark brown Hero Factory shells thrown in here as well. Uh, the concept of Plague Mechs being this sort of mechanical bug-like uh, mech or robot, its uh, I think it's a really clever idea to do that with the color scheme. You take a look at certain bugs, like a cockroach or something, they do have that sort of uh, brown, sort of black kind of mixture to the, the natural color that they are. And so I think replicating that here on the mock does give it this more sort of bug-like exoskeleton look. But also it's just a, a really kind of fascinating color study just to see how very close dark brown and black are and how much they almost sort of flawlessly blend into each other, but there is still that subtle difference. That's really nice. It's really nice to see. So yeah, study some of the colors that LEGO's made and see if some of them are just very, very close and very consistent, very similar. And can you implement both of those into a mock and does it look nice? You know, another color that uh, they work quite well together, but you, you know, there is still a bit of a difference between the two of them is brown or reddish brown and dark red. Those colors actually work very well together. Um, and they're still very similar to each other at the same time. So it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, what a great idea for the color scheme, but also what a great looking mock in general. I love the sort of more slim down limbs on this mock here, specifically on uh, the legs here. The idea of taking this boat stud element here, kind of on the ankles of this mock, and then having those gun barrel pieces kind of branch out like that, and you kind of get that gap in the middle there. It's very bug-like. Uh, it looks very cool too. It's just a, a funky different design. Uh, and then repeating uh, a very similar design there on the arms as well. That's uh, that's pretty cool. So again, maybe this one doesn't quite fit into that Titan look, but again, it is slightly larger than your typical Bionicle, Toa, or Hero Factory build, and that's always nice as well. But I definitely love the idea too of building a Titan that is a little bit more lanky, a little bit more sort of thin-limbed like we see here. Uh, it's a great way to kind of um, get a little bit more height, but not have to use a huge amount of pieces. So maybe you do want to build a Titan mock or a bit more of a taller mock. Maybe you can do similar limbs like this on there that are a bit more sort of slimmed down, but do definitely give it a bit more height. The weapons on this mock are super cool too. I love how they sort of just flow off of the arm like that. That just looks fantastic. And this is a really great head design too. It's a little bit more longer. Uh, the sort of uh, spikes coming out of it there do give it this uh, slight bug-like look to it. It's very fitting and very cool, that's for sure. Let's now move on to the final mock here. This is by Dean Neal, or Daniel, uh, and this is Kaiju Leatherback. Now, this one's super cool. Uh, I spoke before about unique arm designs, or unique hand designs, rather, that are not in scale. Obviously, you can look at uh, different anatomy charts and see, you know, the exact ratio between how big a hand has to be to be in proportion to the rest of the body, all that sort of stuff. Or you could just build very, very large hands, and that's a deliberate choice by you, or a very large torso, very very similar to this mock here. And that's just the aesthetic that you're going for. You're building a, a, an interesting monster or a different creature that doesn't fit with your typical anatomy. And this mock does it very well. I love how he's used a whole bunch of different Hero Factory shells, armor pieces, and bones to create this beautiful hand and finger design here. It's very large and imposing, and it looks like it would be a, you know, quite a powerful punch or a, a powerful slap that it might deliver there on this uh, kaiju-like creature. But also the very imposing back design here and how there's all these different lightning pieces coming out of it. That looks super, super cool. Very fitting for a, a kaiju or some type of monster like this. And that's just a really striking color scheme too. The uh, sort of lighter trans yellow, the purple, and different bits of, of gray or gunmetal here and there. Really, really nice design. And then you can see a couple other elements on this mock where a bit of printing has been used, whether it's... Uh, you know, torso elements or larger um, Hero Factory shell pieces on the legs there. That looks quite nice. You know, maybe you might want to uh, 
take an eraser or get a bit of Brasso or something and uh, take that printing off. But actually, I think the printing enhances it. It actually kind of fits in with the rest of the color scheme and just gives it a little bit more detail. It's quite nice. So don't always be afraid of some of the printing on certain Hero Factory pieces because sometimes it works and it works really well here. So yeah, this is a super, super cool mock that really plays around with different proportions and it works so well. Now, in terms of height, this mock isn't necessarily all that tall because, you know, it does naturally sort of have just sort of smaller legs and it's just a little bit more stout in its uh, in its stature. But I would still classify it as a Titan mock just because, well, it does have those larger hands, that larger body, uh, and it is just a little bit different. And that's nice too. You, you take a look at Gadunka as well. He was a little bit more stout and wasn't sort of naturally very large and in charge, but it still kind of fits and that's okay. And you know, you don't always have to worry about the exact classifications of what exactly is a Titan or isn't. If you want to build a larger mock or you want to build a smaller mock and still call it a Titan, yeah, knock yourself out. Why not? But yeah, this is a fantastic mock with a great color scheme and a lot of really cool concepts, that's for sure. But that's it for this episode of the Binacle Inspiration series. If you want to submit your own stuff to the show, you can do so through the email you're currently seeing on your screen. Additionally, check the links in the description to the mocks that you saw in today's episode and be sure to check out some of the other stuff they've made. You can also see the submission email in the description below as well. And while you're there, you can also see some of my social media as well if you are interested. But that's it for today's episode of the Binacle Inspiration series. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.